Hey, Dr. Chris Moore here. We are back with module four, what I call fat, a well-oiled machine. Now, fat is an interesting nutrient. Fat has gotten a lot of positive and negative press. It was really, really demonized. You know, when I first got into nutrition, fat was the evil nutrient. Low-fat diet was the key. Fat-free foods were, were the king. And then people started to realize, wait a second, fat's pretty important. Maybe we should look a little bit more into this. And interestingly, a lot of the research on fat, in particular types of fat, started in the 70s, not that long ago. And I'll talk more about different types of fat, but one of the studies that came out was looking at different types of diets around the world and their relation to cardiovascular disease or heart disease. Well, what the researchers found was Eskimos were eating a diet that was about 70, 70% calories from fat. And that's really, really high. But they realized they had the lowest rate of heart disease in the entire world. Doesn't seem to make much sense, right? Well, what they found was the type of fat Eskimos were eating, not surprisingly, was a lot of fish fat. Fish and seal and whale are the predominant foods within those diets. So they got a lot of healthy fats, which we'll talk more about. And again, then we started to look at, as, as we got away from that research, they started to look at, you know, all of a sudden fat was causing obesity, which it's certainly not but it's an important piece to the puzzle. And then again, that's like I said, the low fat diet, the fat free diets became really, really popular. In fact, I had to lose weight to play football when I was younger because I was overweight as a kid. And when I did that, that was when the, the low fat diet was popular. So at the time in my mind, as a, as a young eighth grader, or I guess a regular age eighth grader, but uh, as an, certainly a naive eighth grader, and I think those terms probably go hand in hand, I thought, you know, if low fat is good, then lower fat is even better. And I still have my journals at my parents' house. And you know, when I look at it, I tried to get as low fat diet as possible. And there were days that I actually ate two total grams of fat the entire day, which is almost impossible. Um, to think about what I ate now is not so good. So when we think about, it's not just about weight loss. And certainly I did lose weight because I decreased an entire, I almost eliminated an entire food group. I also, that because of that, I, I eliminated a lot of calories. But when we think about the health, fat is essential. When I say, you know, I joke a well-oiled machine, well, fat is important. It's like lubrication for your joints and fuel for your brain and so many other nutrients. And I'll talk more about that. So fat is a vital source of energy, vital source of energy. We all have plenty of stores of fat, you know, some more than others, but we all have fat, whether it's visible or not internally around our organs and it's a cushion for our organs actually it's really really important to make sure we have enough fat um, then we also have essential fat I, I used that term in the previous module about protein well there's essential fats just like there are essential amino acids just to remind you of that definition essential means we need to get them from the diet because our bodies don't make them and then there's also the non-essential fats again not unimportant but our bodies make them now the Right fats can fight inflammation, can help with recovery, and even improve health. Let's look at these more in depth. So fat provides fat-soluble vitamins, and those are A, D, E, and K. There's four of them. It also helps with brain function. Our brains are very, very fatty tissues. The primary fat within our brains is actually an omega-3 fat, again, which I'll cover more in depth, but that plays a big, big role in our brain function and health. Uh, it contributes to growth and development. Uh, potentially has anabolic properties. And there's even some really interesting data coming out now that it may be pro help with protection against concussions. Certainly not a cure-all, but something to certainly keep our eye on as the data continues to come out. So you when know, we look at this as a whole, there's really omega-3s are necessary in every stage of life. Okay, yes, for athletes, as, as you're, we're talking about here, but I think this is important because we look at how it affects everybody from all the way from the, the pregnant woman you see on the left side of the screen and certainly the woman herself, but then the fetus in terms of development. In fact, a study was out of the University of Pittsburgh not too long ago showing about 61% of pregnant women were deficient in omega-3s because that growing baby inside of her preferentially takes those omega-3s for all the development that's going on. Now, look at a little bit older, five to 35 pounds, so babies, okay? So after they're born, up to about 35 pounds, babies, infants, toddlers. Look at brain growth, certainly lots of growth and development and visual development going on at that time, certainly a key there. Uh, and then with brain growth, 
Again, as kids even get older and continuation of that brain growth and development, they start getting into school um, and start learning more. And, and certainly they've obviously been learning since they've been infants, but important for brain growth and neural development at that point. As we get into become adults, we look at cellular stress regulation, cardiovascular protection, joint health, brain health, and then continuing on the age spectrum, seniors. Well, then unlike children who are going on an upward climb of neural development, seniors are trying to prevent that decline. So again, it continues to be ever so important. Remember, omega-3s in particular are the primary fat within the brain. So really every single stage of life and including athletes as well. Athletes can fall into any of these spectrums, right? Uh, maybe not the, uh, the babies, but athletes, the other piece, like I said, concussions, recovery from performance, and then all the other pieces that I, I show on this slide. So this is a very, very powerful statement, and this is from the 2012 Global Summit on Nutrition, Health, and Human Behavior. Listen to this one carefully. Brain and heart disorders resulting from long chain omega-3 fats deficiency, and it says EPA and DHA, those are two omega-3s, so I'll repeat that again. Brain and heart disorders resulting from omega-3 deficiency are the biggest challenges to the future of humanity. And that's amazing to me. And it's a consensus statement from a global summit on nutrition not that long ago. That is powerful. When you look at something like that and a statement like that, it's amazing how much the right fats can play a role in our overall health. Now, when we think about this, here's a study that came out out of the University of Harvard, or Harvard University, a little known school up in Boston. And it was looking at dietary factors and or actually just factors in general, preventable causes of death. Diet was part of it. Well, one of the factors that they looked at was omega-3 or low omega-3 intake. What they found was a low dietary omega-3 intake resulted in up to 96,000 deaths per year. That's amazing. Amazing. When we think about something that's so easy to change by changing some of what you take in your diet or eat in your diet. Now, what, where do we get omega-3s? This is a pretty busy slide. I'll call, talk you through it. It's pretty straightforward, looking at different sources of omega-3s. We have marine-based omega-3s, which provide EPA and DHA. And those are, as you can see there, found primarily in fish and cold water fish, as herring and tuna and sardines, anchovies, etc. The list can go on. I would say salmon and tuna are probably the most common, although if you're strange like me, you like anchovies and sardines as well. Um, but all of those options are great and provide EPA and DHA. When I'm touching on some of this data with brain health and cardiovascular health and so on, it's primarily with those omega-3s, EPA and DHA. Now, we get omega-3s from another source or another type of omega-3 as well, and that's called ALA or alpha-linolenic acid. Well, that's primarily found in flaxseed and flax oil and, and vet, some vegetable oils and like canola, for example, some leafy green vegetables even. And then those are important. However, what's different about these is we, we make EPA and DHA from them, but the conversion is one to five percent in our body. So if you're supplementing or recommending flaxseed or chia seed or hemp seed as a source of omega-3s, you're doing your athletes a, a, a disservice. It's not to say those foods are bad. They just don't provide a great source of omega-3s because as I said, the conversion from ALA to the ever so important EPA and DHA is one to five percent. In fact, one study I'm familiar with showed it's actually less than one percent in adults, so pretty much non-existent. So again, those foods, flaxseed, chia, hemp, are great. They give you fiber, they give you other nutrients, but in terms of omega-3s, they're not so impressive. Now, when we think about this EFA, essential fatty acid balance, this is kind of how we were eating now, the average person is eating. You can see the majority of our diet the majority of our fat, excuse me, comes from omega-6 fats. That's a pretty big chunk. Omega-6 can increase, it can, six fats can increase inflammation. That's the red piece of that pie. Very, very small sliver of that pie is omega-3s. Less than, or just over 2% of our intake is coming from omega-3 fats. That is not enough. I'd love to see a much bigger piece of that pie when we think about the overall health uh, of ourselves, of our athletes, and so on. 
Now, I mentioned this briefly when I talked about the benefits of fats. And here's an interesting study, uh, or, or, or uh, summary, so synopsis of a study or studies that have been done showing brain injury and omega-3 fats for traumatic brain injury and concussions. Think about this importance with athletes. Uh, football, in fact, I recently heard that football is not the number one source of concussions. It's actually women's basketball, um, but there's high levels in soccer and cheerleading. Most sports have a high risk of concussions because of the nature of the sports, right? Football gets a lot of press because of its popularity, but anyhow, concussions are a hot topic right now. We want to make sure we're protecting our athletes, keep them safe. There are some data that omega-3s may do just that, almost act as cushioning in a way for our brains. So act potentially as reducing the risk for prevention and or after a concussion, helping with recovery. So this, there's, a, there's one researcher in particular that's really leading the force. And what he's shown and talked about, and I'll, I'll read you this slide because it's pretty important. We don't yet have a randomized placebo-controlled clinical trial of omega-3s uh, for either severe tra uh, traumatic brain injury, TBI, or concussions. But we do know that omega-3s are the nutritional foundation of the brain and the neuronal cell wall. And we know from growing amounts of clinical experience that omega-3s can be immensely useful to decrease or eliminate many of the symptoms that plague patients following brain injury. So keep that in mind when you're thinking, when you're talking to athletes, and of course working with their doctors and their practitioners as well. I'm not recommending that omega-3s are going to cure someone from a concussion by any means. Something to keep your eye on in the literature, the literature though, as that body of science continues to grow. So what, what fats should we choose? Well, here's just a, a small list. We have avocados and olive oil, canola oil, nut butters, egg yolks, fish, certainly fish oil as well. So all these can make a big comprehensive, or, or make big list. We wanna make sure we're having some of these at each meal. Um, when we think about the health of all these different foods and their benefits, that's important to think about overall. Again, fats play a huge role in our overall health. Now, you may remember this slide from the last couple modules with protein and carbohydrates, and you might be thinking, that's weird, there's no fat on that plate. Well, fat comes with a lot of foods. If you eat fish, for example, that's gonna give you omega-3s. Uh, nuts, for example, are going to give you some, some healthy fats. And olive oil and canola oil, they're not on this slide per se, but we use them in a lot of our food preparations. Um, so yes, think about things like avocados and nuts, and they should be added to the diet. Um, but again, I don't have a separate section for fat because it is a big component of so many foods we eat already when we think about the overall health of the diet. So in summary, quality sources include nuts and seeds and nut butters and, and fish egg yolks, fish oil as well. There are a lot of great data, I'll talk more about this in the supplement section, but there's a lot of great data that omega-3 supplements, a high quality fish oil, kind of should be the baseline for everybody. It would be very, very beneficial. Fat intake and the recommendation should be, is about 20 to 35% of your total intake. I remember what I showed you on the last module with protein, should be, should be in my mind, about 25 to 30% of intake. If you take that and add it to the protein, excuse me, to the fat in this module, we're looking right around that same average, that same uh, marker. So let's say 30% for fat, about 30% for protein. Well, that leaves about 40% for carbohydrates. Maybe you could decrease two of them, increase carbs a bit, a bit, depending on the athlete you're working with. And this is sometimes when it comes, it becomes important to, to work with a, a dietitian, a sports dietitian, who has that expertise uh, themselves to help complement what you're sharing with your athletes. Um, again, the sources, fat intake should be focused uh, on omega-3s for sure, and then also monounsaturated fats, the things like the olive oil and canola oil and nuts and all the sources I showed you. It's a combination of those together that will truly maximize the health of the athlete. Thank you so much. I'm gonna see you over in the next module when we talk about hydration.